Have you ever wondered how paper is made? It's a simple question, yet the answer is a complex process of transformation. Paper, that everyday item, the canvas for our thoughts, the medium of our communication, is born from a remarkable journey. This journey begins with raw materials, undergoes various stages of processing, and ends with a product that has shaped human civilization. Each step in the process is a testament to human ingenuity and our ability to harness natural resources. So let's dive into the fascinating world of papermaking. The journey of paper begins in the forest. Imagine standing amidst a sea of trees, each one a potential page in a book, a letter, or maybe even a piece of art. The first step in the process is harvesting. These trees are carefully selected, cut down, and then debarked. The wood is then chipped into small pieces, ready to be transformed into pulp. But it's not just trees that can be used. Recycled materials like old newspapers and cardboard play a significant role in paper production. These materials are collected, sorted, and then prepared for the same pulping process as the wood chips. Whether it's fresh wood chips or recycled paper, the preparation of these raw materials is a crucial first step. It's like gathering the ingredients for a recipe. With all the materials ready, we can move on to the next stage of the process. This next stage is called pulping. Now, the real transformation begins. We've moved on to the pulping process where the journey of the humble wood chip evolves into the very essence of paper, fibers. Pulping is the heart of this metamorphosis, a process that breaks down the wood chips into a pulpy mixture. There are two primary ways we can achieve this, chemical and mechanical pulping. Chemical pulping involves using chemicals, as the name suggests, to dissolve lignin. For those unfamiliar, lignin is a natural substance that holds the fibers together. It's like the glue in a kindergarten art project, but for trees. On the other hand, mechanical pulping isn't about chemistry, it's about force. It involves grinding the wood, mechanically separating the fibers. Think of it as a robust massage for the wood chips, kneading them until they break apart into individual fibers. Both methods have their merits and are chosen based on the desired quality and type of paper. After pulping, it's time to clean and screen the pulp. Next, we ensure the purity of the pulp. Imagine a meticulous custodian sweeping away impurities from our precious pulp. That's essentially what's happening in this stage. The pulp is rigorously cleaned, with unwanted elements like bark, dirt, and small rocks being shown the exit. Then, it's on to the screening process. Like a fine sieve, screens are used to filter out large particles creating a smooth and consistent pulp mixture. For those who prefer a pristine white paper, the pulp undergoes an additional step, bleaching. It is optional but vital step for white paper. Now that the pulp got bleached, it will become crisp and clean and one step closer to become our beloved white paper. This isn't a chemical nightmare though. We're not talking about the same harsh stuff you use for your laundry. Instead, environmentally friendly bleaching agents are often employed to minimize any negative impact on our precious ecosystem. This bleaching process works to remove any remaining color from the pulp, transforming it into a blank canvas, ready to carry any message you want to put on it. Once the pulp is as white as a winter snowfall, it's time to form the paper. The pulp is mixed with water, creating a slurry. This slurry is then spread evenly onto a wire mesh screen. This forms a wet mat of fibers, a bit like a very thin, very wet piece of felt. With a wet mat of fibers ready, it's time to press and compact them. Moving on to the pressing and drying stages, after the formation of paper, the still wet mat of fibers has to be pressed. This stage involves the mat passing through a series of rollers or press sections. The primary aim here is to squeeze out as much excess water as possible, compacting the fibers to form a more solid sheet. Now it's time to dry the paper. The partially formed paper sheet is passed through heat-emitting cylinders or heated rollers that essentially evaporate the remaining water. This process takes careful handling, as the sheet must be tensioned to prevent wrinkles and ensure a flat, smooth end product. This back and forth between pressing and drying is a delicate dance, a balance between removing water and preserving the integrity of the paper fibers. It's a crucial step in the transformation from a pulpy slurry to a usable sheet of paper. Once dried, the paper might pass through calendar rollers for a polished finish. Finally, we arrive at the last stages of paper making. Once the paper has been dried, it's time for the cutting and finishing processes. Imagine a large roll of paper, fresh off the drying cylinders. But it's not yet ready to be sent off to stationery stores or printing presses. The paper needs to be cut into specific sizes according to the requirements. 
Large industrial cutting machines are used to precisely trim the paper into rolls or sheets. But that's not all. The paper may undergo additional treatments depending on its intended use. For instance, if a glossy finish is desired, the paper might get a coating of specific materials. Or, if the paper is destined to become a high-quality art paper, it may be given a special texture. These finishing touches are what make every type of paper unique and perfect for its specific purpose. Now, let's talk about quality control. Quality control is not just a final step, but it is an integral part of the entire papermaking process. Throughout each stage, from the initial harvesting of raw materials to the final finishing touches, stringent quality control measures are in place. These measures ensure that the paper meets specified standards for thickness, weight, smoothness, and other properties. For example, a simple test can measure the paper's thickness, ensuring it falls within the specified range. The weight of the paper, too, is carefully controlled, as it can impact how the paper feels in your hand and how it performs in a printer or a pen. Even the smoothness of the paper is monitored, as it can affect how ink adheres to the paper surface. These quality control checks are essential in ensuring that the final product is consistent and reliable. Whether the paper is destined for a child's sketchbook or an important business document, it needs to perform as expected, every time. And there you have it, the fascinating journey of paper from the forest to your hands.